Hi, my name is Ben and today we'll be looking at a getting started guide for the Subpunk Red Core system for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So in this guide we're going to be going through a couple of key concepts that have maybe been covered in a couple of videos but this is going to be a perfect example for someone that's looking to just get started in the Subpunk system or just getting started with the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So a couple of the main key things that we'll be focusing on today which I'll try to have listed in uh, detailed sections below so that you can just jump to the relevant sections are um, creating a world in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, uh, basics of the compendium packs that we have included in the system, how to create a character, how to create a MOOC, um, doing particular things in each of those, both in characters and MOOCs in terms of their role abilities, tracking EB improvement points, adding and installing cyberware, equipping armor and weapons, and then we'll also be looking at uh, using items from the compendium, using scenes of movement that's built in within Foundry, how to do initiative and combat within the system, as well as just general skill resolution. Uh, so with that, let's commence. So I've brought up the Foundry Virtual Tabletop system at the moment, as of time of recording, I'm using 0.8.8. .8. Um, now, please do note as a part of this system, there may be some things that are subject to change in terms of changes to the overall system, but most of this content should be useful for you for creating a system or at least getting familiar with, uh, familiar with the basics. So from here under game worlds, let's go create world. Let's just call this Subpunk Red. Same thing with the world name. Game system, we only have the one system installed, which is Subpunk Red Core. And we can leave these just as defaults for now. And let's go create world. And then let's launch. Now, if you've already set up a user password, you'll have to set that here for the time being. I've just left this as blank. So we'll join the game session. And this is now loaded us into the system itself. So the first thing that we want to do as a part of this is we want to look at a couple of the basics that are in the compendium itself, which I'll just bring up here on the right hand side. Now there are a few features here that say import me just as a um, suffix to a couple of these. We definitely recommend importing these into the system just so that you can make full use of both the critical injury system as well as the DV roll tables. So for any of these, there's four in total that say import me. Let's just right click, go import all content. We'll actually see here, we go to the relevant sections, such as the rollable tables. We've got the folders for both critical injuries and DV roll tables, as well as the items as well, which is gonna be uh, used in a, a later part of the video. There are also additional compendium packs that are included as a part of the system as well. I'll be covering this in a little bit of later of this video, but you can see here that we have built in um, a lot of the gear and different items that are available to you out of the box from the core rulebook, but we'll uh, come to that in a later section. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to create a character. So let's go to the actors directory here. Let's click create actor. We have a few different types of actors that we want to create. Clean black ice, character, container, demon, and a MOOC or an NPC sheet. For this example, let's go cre uh, create character. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the stats of the red eye pre-generated character that our Tulsorian has available on their website. So let's do red eye as the name. And that's brought up a, a basic character sheet. Now, what we'll do is we'll just bring up red eyes stats. We'll have a quick look at them. And what we can do then is fill in the relevant data bits to, uh, to bring them up to, up to scratch. Okay, so I've just loaded up the pre-generated uh, character sheets or the single shot pack, which is available on Artel Sorian's website. So if you're looking for characters that you can quickly import into the game, I definitely recommend checking this out. So we can see here that we've got the handle, red eye, or, as well as their name, their role, which is Netrunner, their uh, attributes, so we can see intelligence, reflex, you know, and all that, uh, empathy, hit points, they're seriously wounded, and death save stats, humanity, as well as all their skills, weapons, armor, uh, cyberware, and any other gear that they have. I believe on the section second page we should also have some information regarding their interface abilities as well as their cyber deck as well as some programs so what we'll do as a part of this first section is we'll add in all this information so to begin with let's make sure that we're setting all of their abilities correctly based on what we have here so i'll quickly run through this first section and then we'll review so what i'm doing here is i'm just going to use the mouse scroll bar to quickly increase or decrease the value for the relevant skills. This is just a, um, an easier way to do things. If you want to manually come in here and type what value you want, you can still do that as well. But I find it's just a little bit easier to use the, the mouse scroll wheel and I could just go down, down to get that to that. 
So say here we've got luck, which is seven. Bring that one up. This one, if it wants to work, set that to seven. Move of seven, body of six. Uh, empathy, we'll come back to that one later. That one will automatically get reduced as we install some cyberware. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. We can see here, uh, matching the relevant stats in terms of the character sheet, hit points is now 35 out of 35. Um, death save, which will actually come into the system in terms of that you have to make a death save roll that'll also come into play uh humanity is currently still 60 out of 60 but that'll also get taken away as we install some cyberware for the character themselves what we want to do as well is we want to go to roles here click edit roles we want to set what the active role is and because red eye is going to be a netrunner we'll say netrunner we'll say role experience with this one and we'll disable solo which is usually enabled by default click confirm perfect what we'll do is because we want to set the role ability to interface of four, we'll come to the role tab down the bottom here. We can see here we've got Netrunner as well as their rank. Let's set this to an interface of four. And what we want to do as well is we want to set their relevant skills. So uh, using the example from the single shot pack, let's quickly go through, make sure that we've got everything set. Now there are going to be a couple of defaults that are automatically given to us in terms of characters straight out of the box. Uh, so we can see here, say athletics has a instead of two, a um, base or a total of eight, as well as with a couple of other important skills as well. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go through these, make sure that they're all correct, and then we'll uh, we'll look further. Okay, so we've set all the relevant skills to match what we have in the uh, PDF. We can see here that there are a couple that are using the empathy stat that are going to be a little bit out of whack until we add the uh, actual cyberware, which is going to reduce the empathy. Uh, stat so for the time being this is fine so we can uh, keep everything as is and we can see that for uh, say you know values as basic tech sub tech check we're actually matching the values here so it automatically will pull down the value of the relevant skill and then the level is going to be the additional points that are being put into this skill to get it to, uh, to the base or total value now there are a few other features in terms of the character sheet that I definitely wanted to point out in terms of being able to track your character's abilities and their improvements over time. So an example is the improvement points section here, which is on the bottom left of the character sheet. We can see here improvement points are currently zero. Uh, now as the GM awards you the ability to add improvement points, what you can do is you can click modify and it's a very uh, straightforward section here that's either add, subtract, or set the uh, points as applicable. Say here that we're rewarded in terms of good role playing if we were given 20 points, we can set a reason, good RP, we can say confirm, and we can now have that listed on our character sheet in terms of improvement points so we can keep track of. We've also got a ledger here as well, which is just a essentially a tracker in terms of what's changed. You know, um, you know, just so you can see if you ever need to reference, you know, what's happened, what did you actually spend your points on? And that's also a feature in terms of Eurobox as well. So we come here to the gear tab, which is the middle tab out of these three. We've also got a Eurobox section here as well, where we can go modify by. Let's say that we want to give this character 500 EV to start with. We've got a few options here, whether we can either do to add the Eurobox, uh, subtract or remove the Eurobox, or just set the total value here so what we can do is we can say uh, let's say initial amount and then let's just go set and then we've got 500 euro bucks for this character now what we want to do with our character just to bring them up to speed in terms of the other features and abilities that they have say their armor their weapons any other gear that they have is we're going to take some items from the compendium packs that we have included into the system. So what we want to do is we want to come here to the compendium packs section here and we just want to double check which items we can bring into our character. Okay so for Red Eye we've got a very heavy pistol. Um, so what we'll do first is let's go here in the system to the weapons compendium pack. Let's search for very heavy pistol. And what we can do is we can just drag this straight down onto the character and that's now part of their uh, gear items under the weapons section. We'll also note as well that it looks like they have a few mags. So what we'll do is also let's just also bring down some ammunition as well that we can keep a track of. So what we'll do is close out of this companion pack. We'll come to the ammo pack. We'll do a very similar thing. We go heavy, very heavy pistol. All we need to do is let's just do basic. And then what we can do is just in case we want to modify how much is available here, we'll go to settings. You can see here that the amount is 10. Let's just jump that up to 40 for the time being. And just like that, we've got a weapon for the character. 
Now what we want to do is we want the character to, let's say that we want them to equip it, we want them to have it with them. We've got a few options here uh, under this option here, which is um, whether they're owned, they're carried or they're equipped. So at the moment we can see that this item is currently owned, so it means that they don't have it equipped with them, we can't use it in combat. So all we'll do is we'll click this once. This is now uh, carried, which means that we could say for roleplay purposes, this is carried into inventory. If we click this one more time, this is now an equipped item. So what this means in terms of a gameplay perspective is when an item is equipped, if we come here to this fight tab, we'll actually see that the weapon that we've dropped down is available on the fight tab. And from here, the uh, character can then make an attack or they can make a damage uh, roll as well. And that's all gonna be automated, which I'll show a little bit later in this video. Um, now, if there are any special abilities in terms of auto fire or aim abilities, they'll also be provided here, which the character can also use as they're making their check. In the event that your character has, say, multiple different types of ammunition, you could also come here as well. You could uh, switch out the ammunition that you want the character to use, and it's uh, just as straightforward as that. The next thing that we want for this character is that they have light armor jack. So what we'll do is we'll come back to the compendium. We'll go to the armor compendium this time. And what we're going to do is let's go... We've got light armor jack body and light armor jack head. So they're two different items, one to cover the head, one to cover the body. So we'll go head and body and we'll close that one down and similar to what we had with the weapon we're going to go one two one two and that's now an equipped armor and if we come back down here to the fight tab we can see that the light armor jack body and light armor jack head are both equipped and that also tracks the stopping power of each item which is currently set to 11 for both now the last few things that we want to get done for this character for the time being is we want to add in some cyber as well so what we'll do is we'll come to the Cyberware Companion Pack. We can see that they have a mirror link. So let's drop that one down. Interface plugs. And shift tax. All right, we'll close that one off. And then what we want to do now is we currently have this in their inventory, but we actually still want to install them. So there is an install option that we can see here for each of the items. Now, uh, what we'll have to do first is because Neuralink is gonna be the foundational cyberware, this is the, the main component that's required before you can put any other Neuralware types into the system, is we'll click install first. It'll come up with a prompt asking us, okay, you wanna install the neural, uh, Neuralware foundational item, what humanity loss do you want to use for this? So we can either roll, which will roll it for us. It'll do a static amount, so it'll remove a static value of it. Or if for some reason we're doing this without any humanity loss value, say, um, you know, the character already had it, you just bring this into the system, or for some roleplay reasons they don't lose any humanity, you can select none here and it won't reduce the humanity value. Um, for this example, I'm just gonna go set static. We'll go install. It's been removed from this cyberware section here, but if we come to the right hand side under cyber, we'll see here we've got Neuralware, Neuralink, and then we've got zero or five optional slots being used at the moment. Now, if we wanted to remove this cyberware item, we could always come here under actions and click uninstall. But for the time being, let's install the other cyberware gear that we have as well. So we've got the interface plugs, which are gonna be a component of Neuralware. So let's go install. Similar process, we just wanna make sure that we've got the foundational cyberware linked up, which is already installed, so there's no problem there. Humanity loss, go static, go install, and that's also now installed, and that's gonna be a uh, an optional component of the uh, Neuralware here. So we can see Neuralink, one of five optional slots used, and then we've got the interplay, interface plugs there. And then we'll get the shift tax in, so they're fashionware, so they're a little bit different, so we don't have to worry about foundational stuff, so we'll just go install. Um, now this doesn't have any humanity loss value for this particular cyberware, so that's great. So we'll just do either. Let's just do static of zero. And that's now installed as well. If, if you ever need to reference anything in terms of the cyberware that you're installing, just feel free to left click it. It'll bring up some details in terms of a very, very brief description. It'll also give you information on the price, price category, the source page as well. So make sure to refer to the uh, core rulebook the uh, install type, so where this has to be installed, either you know, like a clinic or whether you have to go to hospital for something like this. Uh, and then there are just a few settings as well in terms of, you know, is this a weapon? Does this have any optional slots? Um, you know, if they are losing humanity, how much humanity are they losing? Now, unless you're creating your own cyberware, which you can do at any time, um, probably just feel free to leave these as is if you're taking them down from the companion packs and then just sort of doing that to bring into your character. 
So with the silverware done, the last thing we want to do with this is we just want to add in some gear items. Um, so firstly, let's bring up the gear companion pack. I've got a few things. Just about everybody in the time of the red has an agent. So let's bring down an agent. Red eye also has a cyber deck. So let's bring down the cyber deck. And then we've also got virtuality goggles. Now, most gear items are just for reference or just for roleplay purposes. So they won't really typically have an impact in your game unless you decide to um, implement that further. So we can see here that the agent item, if we click on this one, it just gives us a bit of a description. We can see that it, it, do, it does or it can provide plus two to some uh, checks as well. Um, we've also got some very base settings here at the moment, but we won't go, won't go into that too much in terms of uh, this video at the moment. Same thing with virtuality goggles. We can see here that it just gives us a brief description. And for roleplay purposes, we just want to make sure that we have it equipped on our character just to make sure, yes, you know, we have this available. Yes, we have this equipped. Um, we can do that as well. Now, we've got a Cyberdeck item as a part of being a net runner. And I'll go into that uh, in just a moment because we'll also be adding in some programs as well. Okay, so we have the Cyberdeck item. What we want to do is we want to add in the applicable programs that Red Eye has out of the box. And they're going to be installed onto the Cyberdeck. So what we'll do is we'll come up here to programs on the left hand side, we've got our selection here. And what we wanna do is we'll just select the programs that Red Eye will have on their cyber deck. So we've got armor, bring that one down. Let's just do a search because it's a little bit easy for us. Sword, see ya. Frizz bolt. And then finally a worm as well. All right, so we've got the five programs here. And what we want to do is we want to actually install them into the Cyberdeck program. So all we'll do is we'll click install here. It'll automatically pick up that we have a few programs ready to install. So what we'll do is we'll go uh, select one, two, three, four, five. We'll click confirm. And now they'll have disappeared from our program at the moment because they're actually installed on the Cyberdeck itself. Now, if we want to bring up some details in terms of the programs themselves, let's go to this one. We want to make sure that we've got this equipped. And this is going to modify the fight tab. So we've got both a meat space um, section as well as a net space action. So let's click net. You can see here that we've got uh, cyber deck actions that you can take at any time. Now these are, aren't usually program specific, but you can just um, roll them, which usually use your interface check just in case you need to. We've also got our list here of um, programs that we have installed. So uh, they're dependent based on the section of what they are. So, you know, we've got Defender, Booster, Anti-Program, Attacker, or Anti-Personnel Attacker. And then from here, the uh, character can make their um, attack or damage rolls applicable. Uh, they can also erase a program if they need to. If it's a type of program that gets rezzed, such as say an armor program, what we can do is we can click activate. Uh, we can reduce res as we go, or if the program is, is sort of losing res if it gets attacked by a black ice program. So we can reduce that here. We can always set this back to uh, the default res if we get to reset it, or if we want to deactivate it, we can just deactivate the program here as well. Okay, now that'll be the basics of a character actor. Let's take a look at the other side of the fence, which is going to be for a MOOC or an NPC. So what we'll do is we'll close out of this one. We'll come back to the actors directory. We're gonna create an actor, and this time we're gonna do MOOC. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reference another publicly available um, PDF, which has some hardened MOOCs. So this is gonna be a little bit more difficult than usual, but they're gonna be a perfect example for what we're after. So if we refer to this section here, let's say what we wanna look at the hardened bodyguard MOOC type, then we're gonna bring in these uh, skills, similar to what we did before with the, the character actor, but this time we're gonna do it a little bit differently because the interface is a little bit different, but the process is most of the same. So let's uh, just review these settings for just a moment and then we'll add them into the character itself. Okay, so let's st first start off with setting the name. So we'll go Hardened Bodyguard. And we'll just have to set the values as applicable. So we can see here that similar to a regular character, we have different values, well, everything except luck that can be set. So what we'll do is we'll just refer to the uh, document that we're checking here. We'll make sure that we set the values as appropriate. So int for ref six, dex six, tech, we'll set that as two, call for, will for luck we don't care about, move five, body seven, emp three. 
hit points we can change this value if we want to to have a sort of a custom value this is a sort of a unique npc um, that you want to have as potentially you know with more hit points maybe they have better armor or something that you've designed yourself you can set that as you need to here wound state will change automatically as their health goes down and death save is applicable if you want to make a sort of a death save roll um, we'll come to the weapons and gear items uh, in a moment what we have here as well is with skills we want to add in particular unique skills for this character say with the hardened bodyguard we want to add in a drive lane vehicle we can come here to the right hand side click edit it's going to ask us hey you know what do you want to set this um uh well what skill do you want to set we'll say okay we want to do drive lane vehicle Again, we have to do a little bit of thinking in our head because we have to think okay well we've got reflex of six the drive lane vehicle is 10 so let's just set this to four and they now have a drive drive lane vehicle of plus 10. so if we look at this one it gives us a breakdown of the reflex and skill value so six and four and that gives us the 10 that we're after i won't go through all of the additional skills for this character but that just gives you an example of what you can do if you wanted to do on mass a lot of different types what you can do is you can go through here set the value that you want and then click modify another skill that'll keep this window open so that you can quickly rush through and make all of the uh, skill types that you need now with this particular mooc what we want to do is we're going to bring down a poor quality shotgun so similar to the character type let's go companion packs let's bring up weapons what we'll do here is we'll go shotgun we'll do a poor shotgun drop this straight onto the mooc we can see that that's now here but it's unloaded so let's also bring down some ammunition so they've got slug ammo of 25 so we'll come to the ammo competing pack we can see here that we've got a few different types let's just do basic shotgun slug drop that in here we can see this one as well so what we'll do is we'll modify this we'll go to the settings tab it's at default at 10 but let's just so 25 close out of that one Close this one so we can see this nice and easy what we want to do uh, some of the characters we want to change the ammunition type let's make sure that that's set to basic shotgun of slug confirm and that's now loaded it with four out of four ammunition for the poor shotgun now the uh, document also says that they have brawling but we can also just do a brawling check in terms of making that check itself uh, what we also want to do here is we want to add in some light armor jack similar to what we did for red eye so we'll come to the armor section I've still got the light armor jack set so let's just go drop this in drop this in we can see that's set here similar what we had with the character is that we can uh, ablate the armor as it takes damage or as it uses the stopping power it'll obviously get ablated um, which is what we want here now it's automatically dropped in the uh, ammunition for the shotgun but we can see that this character also has a radio communicator so we'll do is we'll come to the gear section radio communicator drop that in and it's as simple as that now this particular character does not appear to have any uh, cyberware enhancements so we don't have any cyberware to add here but what I'll do just as an example is let's just say that they have some minor cyberware that we want to add in so similar to the runner let's just say that they had this wants to work for me let's add in a mirror link It'll automatically prompt for the type that we want to set it to because this is a uh, again just for an example let's just go static say interface plugs as well it'll prompt us again it'll say hey you know I can see that you've got this foundational cyberware let's go static again go install and then for this character we can see we've got the foundational item we've got the uh, optional item here as well now in the event that you ever want to get rid of this uh, the, the subware or any other sort of gear that you have on a MOOC sheet you can see here if you hover over the text it does say that you just need to press the delete key to delete uh, so what we can do is we can just click the delete button it'll say hey are you sure you want to remove it yep we'll also do it with the foundational item yep delete it and that's just as simple as that as well so if you want to add any notes for a particular MOOC say you know their behavior their combat style you can add it here as a note section as well just make sure that you also click the save button as well and click save and that is now saved as a part of the character sheet um, by default it won't have an image because the uh, sort of the MOOC or the NPC sheet doesn't have a image in the uh, core rulebook itself if you did want to add an image you can just click expand here it's just got a sort of a default set then you can just collapse that again um, but you can also set that at a token level when we actually bring them into a scene which is what we'll be covering in the, the next section
So we have both a uh, character and a, a MOOC or an NPC. And what we want to do is want to bring them, say, for example, into a scene so we can uh, have them sort of walk about. We can actually sort of get a bit of a feel for how Foundry integrates with scenes and, uh, and, and all that sort of content. So all we'll do is we'll close out of this MOOC sheet. What we want to do is we actually want to try and use some of the uh, built-in scenes that are included in the companion pack. Now we have a community member um, that has provided these scenes straight out of the box. So I definitely recommend checking them out. Uh, definitely check out the Patreon, which I'll also link below as well. But we can see here we've got two dystopian maps, a city junction and a streets. So let's say that we want to bring in the streets. So what we'll do is we'll right click it. We'll go import entry. We'll say, hey, you know, are you happy with all these settings, everything like that? Yep, that's fine. Looks good to us. What we'll do is we'll say, let's view this scene. This will bring it up in the top left hand corner for us. If we want to make this the active scene, which means that any players that join the game will have this set, we can click activate. And this is looking now uh, looking pretty good. So what we'll do is let's just unpause the game here. I'll come back to the actors directory. And what we're going to do is let's bring in both red eye as well as the hardened bodyguards just so we can put them on the uh, on the scene. So we'll bring in red eye over here. We'll bring the hardened bodyguard over here. And what we might have straight at the box is that they might have a yeah, they might not have a vision set. So let's just go vision. Let's just set this to a high value. Just so they can actually see what they're doing. Same thing with the MOOC. Okay, perfect. All right, so what we'll have here is we've got Red Eye as well as the MOOC. Uh, now, if you are collecting or you have your own assets that you want to use for some of this token artwork or you use a module that has support for adding in artwork, you can definitely set them at any time. So if we want to do that, let's just make sure that we have some artwork available, which will just load into the system. Okay, now I've just loaded some images into the Foundry system myself. So if you have them, I definitely recommend uh, adding them to the system either by bringing them straight into the um, either the world or the system data and then loading them up that way. Or you can just use, say for example, a tile browser and then adding them. So for this example, what I've done is I've added some data to my local world. So you'll just have to add in them in yourself, but you can upload them from your local computer. So what we have here with these images is let's say, uh, click on uh, red eye first. So I'll bring up their token data because what we want to do is we want to bring in some information here. Great, so we can see that the uh, actor data is linked, which means that any changes that we make are going to be uh, added or changed to the sort of item moving forward. So we'll go here is token image path. Let's set this one. We want to come out of the system data here. We just want to come to worlds. Uh, this is the name that we set originally. We want to come data. We can see here that we have the images that I've uploaded. Let's say select file, update token. And we can see red eye is set here as well. We also want to give their name um, the ability to sort of either be hover or, or statically available. If we right click again and we go to uh, character, we go to display name, it's got never displayed. Let's say that we always want this to show for everyone. And just like that, we can see that red eyes name is clearly listed here. So just in case um, anyone needs to reference who the character is, we can bring them up straight, uh, straight away, just like this. Um, similar with the MOOC, let's bring them up here. So let's right click, we'll go image. We'll come out of the system folder. We want to come straight to worlds, the world name that we set, data. Let's use this file here as well. What we'll do is we'll also make sure that we do this. Let's say for this one, let's just say if anyone hovers over this name, we'll do this one. Now with this bodyguard, let's actually just set them to neutral and that'll just change the frame around them. And we can see here that they've got like an orange frame. This one has a blue frame. So this just immediately allows us to identify, you know, friend or throw, a uh, friend or foe. So we can see here that this is now set for this character. And, uh, and that's it. So it looks a little bit nice when you have a map just like this, you can sort of see that um, it's a little bit nicer on the eyes just to have different character information set. But um, a as you add in your own artwork or your own assets, you can definitely set this to whatever you want. You can do sort of like a, you know, sort of like a round sort of symbol. You can do sort of over the top images if you have those available. There's definitely a lot of artwork out there in the world, both on you know Patreon or different markets. So definitely, um, definitely have a think about it and um, feel free to add in your own assets to the game. So what we're going to do now is that we have uh, both a character and a MOOC on a scene. We want to roll through the uh, both the initiative order as well as combat tracking. So what we'll do first is we want to make sure that we've selected both the uh, red eye character as well as the MOOC. And uh, we can do that by holding or by clicking one character, holding shift and then clicking the next. We can then right click either of these two and then click here to toggle the combat state. 
that'll bring up in this combat window here that we've got in the encounter. It hasn't yet started, but we can also choose to roll initiative for either of these two. So what we'll do is we'll just click here to roll initiative for each of these. So we can see that the hardened bodyguard got 11, red eye got 14, perfect. Yep, excellent. And this is automatically using the relevant stats from the characters themselves to roll for initiative. Um, now with this, we can see the red eye starts at 14, the bodyguard is next at 11, and we'll begin the combat round. So in round one, what we want to do is we want red eye to take a uh, pistol shot against the bodyguard, just as an example for this situation. What we'll do is bring up this character, and we'll see here under the fight me tab. Um, now, we just have to make sure that the item itself has a DV uh, table set. Uh, I didn't get a chance to show this earlier in the video, but as long as we see here, the DV table is set to an appropriate value for the weapon. So this is a heavy pistol. So we use the DV of pistol. We'll actually have an option here to use or set what we call a measure DV uh, ruler, essentially. So what we'll do for this character, is let's say that we want to measure the DV, close out of that one. What we want to do is we just want to hold down the control button and then we can actually bring up a ruler. It'll actually tell us based on the distance um, what the DV check is going to be. So because a pistol is a relatively short range weapon, we can see here that anything up to uh, 6 meters is a DV 13 check to make with your handgun skill. Anything further than that becomes 15 and then so on and so on as we sort of keep going along we can see that that continues to increase DV 20 you know sort of goes up to almost becoming an impossible shot. So we can see here for Red Eye's character they want to make a attack with a uh, their pistol which is going to be a DV of 15 which is great. So what we'll do is we'll close out of that one we'll bring up their character sheet or the player themselves can bring up the character sheet. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go here, we want to click on roll and attack. All we'll those will bring up the card here. Let's clear this one out. Oh, oh, there you go. So it's told us that we don't actually have bullets loaded into our weapon at the moment, which is uh, oversight on my part. So that's fine. So let's just make sure that we have all the ammunition loaded that we need to. So there we go. All right, so we've got our ammunition set. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll make sure to roll and attack. So we'll go here, it'll say, okay, so you wanna use your ref of six, your handgun of six. If you have any modifiers for this, say, you know, you've got an advanced weapon, if it's automatic, if it's a higher quality weapon, say an excellent weapon, it will automatically have a modifier applied. But if there's any, maybe some uh, situational um, modifiers, you know, in the environment or something provided to you by the GM, you can also set this when you make the roll. So what we'll do is we'll click confirm here. Uh, and we can see here that for this, we've rolled a total value of 20. Let's just click on this one. We can see that this was a ref of six, handgun of six, so that gave us a base of 12. We've also then rolled an eight, which gave us a 20, which has matched the um, DV check that we had to make to attack the bodyguard. Now, to actually roll damage for this, we have a couple of different options here. What we can do is if we click back to the character sheet, we can click on the roll damage option here if we wanted to roll damage. Um, we also have an option on the card itself and that'll also bring in some information here. So uh, let's just click on damage here. It'll say, okay, um, so you're rolling, you know, confirmation for the pistol that you're shooting with. Um, if you're doing an aimed shot, this will ask you, hey, you know, can you just confirm that this was an aimed shot? What were you aiming for? And lastly, if there are any modifiers as well. So let's just leave this as is and we want to click confirm. It'll come through. We can see that we've, oh, so we've rolled two sixes, which is great. So we've also rolled bonus damage as well, um, which is exactly what we wanted because that also means that we get to look at doing critical injuries. So what we'll do is we'll come up to this character here and I'll just expand this a little bit for this one. So what we'll do is we're gonna to have to roll critical injuries for this one. So let's go roll in the critical injury table. It'll say, hey, you know, because you've imported it, these are the two tables that you have available, both head or body. Because this wasn't an aim shot, they weren't aiming for the head, we'll just say that this is body. We'll go confirm. It's rolling the card for us and we can see here that they now have a collapsed lung critical injury. We click on this one, it will tell us that what they've got is a minus two of move, as well as what the quick fix or the treatment is for this as well. Um, so that's something that we can keep in mind for this character is that because they now have a collapsed lung attack that they're going to have minus two to their movement for any movement that they want to make as a part of their round. Now uh, for this particular character, let's just clear this out as well just so we can see what we're doing. With this particular character, we still want to process the damage that they took, which is 18, as well as some additional bonus damage. So what we want to do is the body was able to, let's say, negate uh, 11 points of that damage. So that brings it down to seven plus the additional five. So what we'll do is we'll ablate this because it's taken some damage from that round for us, but we'll also have to modify the hit points. Now we can modify the hit points here directly, but using Foundry's built-in features, we can also modify this ourselves if we set it up correctly. So I'll just quickly show how we could do that. 
We go to resources here, we've got display bars. We could say always for owner, which is gonna be the GM or the derived stats.hp is. So we can see here, there's a bottom down below, which is going to be the 40 out of 40 for us as well. So let's say, firstly, we wanna minus off the eight points of damage that got through. And then also minus five. We can see that that's processed that here. It looks nice. We can see that it's, uh, so it's featured here just like this. And then it's also minus the hit points for us here as well. So that's the uh, uh, MOOC's um, damage being processed here. And then likewise, if we wanted to proceed through the combat, let's say that Red Eye is happy or maybe they wanted to take some movement um, just to sort of get themselves potentially try and move behind some cover. We can see here that they have a movement of seven, which means that they can move seven squares. Let's say they want to move behind here. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then now behind this sort of um, partial, partial cover that we have just listed over here. Um, we could say that they're now completed their action and we would come to the bodyguard who would then process their action. Um, so we can see here that if they wanted to do a similar thing as well, they could, um, you know, we could bring up this ability, we could go measure DV, check this from this character, we could then bring this up, we can see that they have their shotgun. Um, for a close range, the DV would be 13, but as we go and increase our distance, especially for someone that's potentially behind cover, we could see that at most uh, this would be a DV of 20 to make. Um, so for this ganger, that would uh, this mook that would potentially be quite a hard uh, shot to make, especially in their condition that they're at at the moment. So it might get a little bit tricky for them. Um, so I won't go through the rest of combat for the time being, but that's just an example of what we can do with some characters once they're in the foundry system and once they're in a scene. Um, but let's look at some sort of out of combat examples of say role play when someone wants to make a particular check for something that they they have we can do that both at a scene level as well as um, outside of a scene if you're just on a landing page or if you're just using images for reference you can also bring up the character sheet there so let's just deselect this um, bodyguard for the time being uh, let's just end combat completely and let's just bring up red eye who we're going to continue using as an example throughout this uh, the, the remainder of this section so let's bring up red eye here let's bring up skills again so let's just say that Red Eye is now um, sort of inside, let's say that they're inside the, um, you know, they, they've sort of gone inside a building and they wanna make a few checks. Let's just say they wanna make a stealth check. Um, at any time, you could either bring up the character sheet here by double left clicking the character sheet themselves. If a, a player has access to, or, or you know, permissions to a character, which you can always set here under right clicking and then going configure permissions. At any time they can come here, they can configure the character here. They can bring them up and immediately look at all the information. They can go straight here back to skills. And then if they wanted to make a check, they could also do this as well. So we come here to the stealth option and then bring this one up. It'll give us a confirmation. Hey, you know, I want to see that you want to make a, a role for your stealth. You know, this is your dex. This is your um, level skill for stealth. Are we rolling any modifiers for this? And if, if you're rolling criticals, you know, should we roll criticals as well? So let's say that we want to make a stealth check. That gets processed for us as well. Wow, okay, great. So they've rolled a 10, which also gave them another D10 that they can roll, which will also get processed for us because we enabled rolling for criticals and they rolled a total of 25 for their stealth check, which is um, which is pretty damn good. So that's that's great. So that's a perfect example of just rolling for abilities just outside of, outside of combat, which you can do at any time um, by sort of doing that. Okay, now that was a few of the basic features in terms of getting started in the Cyberpunk Red Core system. I'll try to be showcasing a few uh, more advanced features in terms of the system in a few later videos. That may include potentially looking a little bit further into how to um, you know, how to utilize net running, how to utilize potentially using maps, um, some other features, as well as some third party modules, which the community have found very, very useful in terms of adding into your system or adding into your game. So I'll try to include that in some later videos. If you have any recommendations for what you'd like to see in terms of some showcases of the features or the system itself, or what you'd potentially like to see in the future, please feel free to let us know both maybe potentially in the, you know, the YouTube comments below. Um, feel free to join us on our Discord or in the GitLab community, which I'll also link in the um, in the sections below um, and that'll just about do it but yeah if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us we're, um, we're an open community we're not affiliated with artists or in games themselves so again you know with a few of these features that you watched in this video you do have to create the actors and the mooks themselves just because that's the uh, the um, sort of the uh, restrictions that we have in place on us because we're not you know, officially a part of the uh, a part of the team but um, uh, yeah th that'll be it and uh, thanks so much for watching